Hey, Brad Lancaster here, author of the books Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond. And I want to show you a little installation we did in 1996, this being the year 2023, where behind me we planted these native food bearing shade trees, only a five gallon size, so you know, just about just over a foot tall in 1996 that we planted them within water harvesting basins. They collect the water not from the street, but from the adjoining one acre roof. Okay, I'm gonna change the perspective and let's check it out. Okay, we just got 0.2 of an inch of rain. Not much, but it was a real short and intense one. So let's see how these trees are getting irrigated for free from the rain captured off these roofs, this roof in a simple um, water harvesting basins. So here's one of the roof scuppers, water comes out hits the wheel stop, goes in here, and then there's this half moon uh, berm, boomerang berm, um, and uh, so there's a basin here where water first collects, then it overflows here into this basin. Okay, it's pretty subtle, all right? Once this fills up, it'll overflow to the next. Let's walk on down, we can see the next scupper. So here is a scupper, water's coming down and fills in this whole basin. Now again, we only got 0.2 of an inch of rain. Uh, if we get a half inch of rain, all these basins are totally full. Okay, this one's filled, already the water's infiltrated. And when it fills up, water overflows, backs up, fills here. This one's filled up and Got these real subtle berms here. So once full, the water overflows this way into this one, which will overflow into this one, which fills up and overflows there. Okay, super simple. Yeah, here you can see you got another scupper, water coming out, fills this basin and overflows to the next. So in the past, all this water just flowed right out of the street and was lost. And here's another scupper. Okay, this is all filled up. And then it overflows around that way. So we're trying to zigzag the flow. Slow it, spread it, and sink it, infiltrate it. We slow it with these water diverting speed humps. Um, and all the roots of the trees and whatnot we planted help break up the soil so more water infiltrates. This one's filled up. Once it's filled, it can overflow, fill this basin. Another scupper there, which can add to the flow. When this fills up, it overflows here. That one fills up and overflows there. So, this uninsulated uh, masonry wall um, used to just cook because the hot afternoon sun from the west is over there and it would just blast this wall making things uncomfortable for the folks inside and increasing utility costs because of the increased need for mechanical cooling but by planting all these native food bearing shade trees on the west side freely irrigated with the water that comes off the roof no tanks needed we just store the water in the tank of the soil <coughs> um, then the living pumps of vegetation, the trees, uptake that water, and then they shade this whole west-facing wall, cooling the temperatures for those within, those walking along here, and those on the street and in the neighborhood. Uh, and Susan Johnson, a neighborhood artist, painted a beautiful mural on the wall too, so we don't just look at an industrial masonry wall. All things improved, um, and it's gone a little further where as I go along here, just up ahead is a little community bulletin board with some educational signage and whatnot um, that gives more information on how all this system works with some before and after photos. So I'll just show you that real quick. So here at the community bulletin board, here we can see um, this little sign is showing uh, how the water is going to all these various basins. This was taken in 2007 
Okay, and we've got before and after photos. There's the before. There's the after. Now we've got the water harvesting traffic coming. The other real sweet thing about this simple system behind me is it has an annual stormwater harvesting capacity of over 30,000 gallons in an area where we only get 11 inches of rainfall in a year. And that 30,000 gallon capacity, well, it was done in just two hours by two people with hand shovels. Gotta love that return. Okay, so this stuff costs no more than the price of a shovel. It's real simple to do. Now, of course, we were motivated because we did it in a rainstorm. That's the funnest time to do it because you see everything filling up with water right off the bat. You get the feedback loop. You see where you need to raise the berm, where you need to drop the berm, and where you want to divert water a different way and so forth. It's so fun. Highly recommend it. We are not pumping any groundwater. Uh, we are not importing water from elsewhere to irrigate these trees, these living air conditioners. It's all free, on-site, passively harvested water. No tanks needed. And uh, we did all this work before um, we helped the city of Tucson legalize the cutting of the street curb to direct street runoff into street side basins. So there's just many different ways to capture water in different contexts. This is just another. For still more, be sure to check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, which you can get a deep discount direct from me at my website, harvestingrainwater.com. You can also get a lot of great free videos and other information on that website, and check out another website, neighborhoodforesters.org, for our neighborhood rain irrigated food forestry efforts. All right, thanks so much for watching.